Hello, welcome to episode 213 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 9th of June. So welcome everybody, I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I have some knitting, a couple of sewing projects to show, show you, a blast from the past which is sewing as well. I have a gadget stroke confession. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't so bad because it is a gadget as well. Obviously I needed to buy it to show on the podcast of course. <laughs> I have some information on my shop update and then a little appearance from Jensen who's got something crochet to show you at the end of the podcast. So if you want to skip along to any of the sections you can drag the progress bar at the bottom of the screen. So I have a couple of make-alongs going on in the Ravel group and an Instagram as well. You can find links and hashtags in the description bar down below for those. But it's Craft 20 a Day, which is chipping away at those longer projects, doing sort of 20 minutes a day. And then we've got the Spring Shawl Along 2022, which is basically any shawl or any sort of cowl or wrap or anything that could sort of be semi-related to a shawl. I'm very open to bending of the rules. So let's get on with the knitting, shall we? So I've started working on a cardigan. It doesn't look much like a cardigan yet, but it is the full width of sort of the back from shoulder to shoulder. And then I've done about that much knitting um, on the back. And this is going to be the Sparkle Cardigan by Hohi Okatelli. And I'll pop a picture up here so you can see what it's going to look like. Now I have knitted this pattern before um, and it's supposed to have like eyelets all over it to make it a lacy cardigan. But I thought that it'd be really nice to have a sort of solid one in at least most of the cardigan so that it'll be slightly warmer than just a really summery cardigan. And uh, what I might do is try and add some just lace detail just at the bottom of the cardigan I think I haven't decided exactly what yet but as I've got to knit it sort of from the top down it'll be a while before I get to that point anyway so this yarn is my ocean drive colorway and it's specifically on this one base because there are some gray undertones on this particular yarn so this is a merino yak and silk base 60 percent merino 20 percent silk 20 percent yak and it's a lovely soft yarn i knitted my wishes cardigan in the same base but this is a different color this time but i had to go back to this pattern because i really liked the shape of the cardigan over the shoulders the way that it's constructed and the way that it fit really so I'm just using another fingering weight yarn with the same needles and I'm just going to knit exactly the same sort of shape I did three quarter length sleeves and a slightly cropped length as well but obviously I'm omitting the eyelets from all over and I think that'll make it a bit of a quicker knit so this is what the yarn looks like in the cake and it's a gorgeous sort of turquoise but on the green side of turquoise I'd say or teal maybe and I've wanted a cardigan this colour for ages so I thought I'd dice some up for myself and go ahead so there we go I have cast some on what I will do is once I've done a little bit more of this cardigan in a couple more episodes I'll show you my other sparkle cardigan that's been finished already as a bit of a comparison so that is what I've been working on knitting wise. I have done a couple of triangles on my triangle and blanket, but not enough to really show you, um, you can really tell the difference on. So I'll keep that for another week. I have done a small amount of work on my Ziggy Interrupted as well, but I'm gonna save that till next week because I've got a couple of sewing projects to show you. So first of all, I've been doing a couple more blocks for my quilt that I've been doing. So. Um, me and my local quilt group have chosen some blocks out of a magazine which I can't remember what the magazine was now um, but they're quite sort of modern blocks and this was the first one that we made and I've been doing a few more to go with it so we also have these two blocks that I've been I've worked on this week um, they don't have specific names to them but I've tried to put sort of different graves and then this bright turquoise in to sort of make them all tie in together and I really like these arrows they're a lot of fun and I've alternated the two different turquoise materials on those so those are the three blocks that I've got so far that and some other people in my quilt group are also making so I've done three blocks now um, 
we have got 12 different blocks that we've chosen so I'm going to do at least one of each of them to make this quilt so depending on how many I do of each um, depends on how big it's going to be so we shall see <laughs> So the next thing I've got to show you is also sewing and I've been working on a pair of jogging bottoms. I've been wearing lots of loungewear lately so I thought what well, nothing better than to make a pair of jogging bottoms to be nice and cosy in the house. So these are the Stella jogging bottoms and I have made some changes to these. So originally they had uh, a much wider waistband but I did narrow it so that it is just big enough for the elastic so the elastic is to the top of the ribbon material but also in the seam line as well so it doesn't flip over at all it's nice and sturdy I haven't bothered stitching over the top just because sometimes it sort of messes around with the elastic underneath so I've left it um, just so that it's integrated into the seam um, at the bottom of the waistband so I did shorten the waistband a bit and I also have taken two inches off the length of the leg because I am a bit short <laughs> I am five foot three and I took two inches off the leg and I think that's perfect for me so I originally drew this pattern out to do his pajama bottoms so I did make sure that they definitely weren't too long so I don't want to be tripping up and down the stairs um, with really long jog jogging bottoms but they do fit me just to my ankle they're not too long at all for this particular pair, I used the same material as I made my last pair for the main part of the jogging bottom, um, but I, did, I didn't have enough to do the pockets, so I had some other fabric which had hearts on. This is a sweatshirt in fabric, whereas this is a French terry fabric. I had enough out of this fabric to go into the pockets, and I thought, actually, I could wear this with the jumper that I've made out of this fabric, and I will show you the jumper that I made that was made out of this fabric in the next section which is blast from the past and um, maybe I'll give you a twirl with them both on at the same time I didn't make a pair of jogging bottoms to use as pyjamas out of this fabric I did have the pocket exactly the same material but I was actually able to get two pairs of trousers out of two meters of this fabric because I chopped two inches off the legs and also the fabric I'd chosen was really wide I was then able to cut out two pairs of bottoms um, at least without the pocket out of the same fabric um, so it did say that I needed two meters I think um, but the fabric was quite substantially wider than the widest fabric that it had the the fabric guidelines for on the pattern so I forgot to say this is the Stella joggers from the Tilly in the button stretch book it does say that you need two meters but this fabric was quite wide like I said and I could actually get two pairs out but not with this pocket pieces as well so I had to use the sweatshirt and material and also for the waistband I did use a ribbing as well so that um, does make it so that you're not using so much of the main fabric and I also used the ribbon for the cuffs as well I will leave links to these three fabrics um, and they're all from Guthragani. So that is a pair of jogging bottoms finished. Not very exciting to show you really, but something that I'll wear lots and lots and lots. And like I said, I do have the sweatshirt to show you in the Blast from the Past section. And then I can hopefully give you a twirl of the two items together. So today's Blast from the Past is my jumper. But Jensen wanted to come and join because he was grumbling <laughs> while I was trying to film. So today he's in the video twice. So this is my Billy sweatshirt by Tilly and the Buttons. And it's made out of the same fabrics that I spoke about for the trousers that I showed you just now. And I'm really pleased at how well the two pieces go together actually. What do you think Jensen? <laughs> I'll give you a bit of a twirl. They're quite a slim fit jogging bottom. Um, not sure whether I'd really go out and about in them, but they're great for sort of having a comfy set to wear in the house anyway. So, I bet you want to have a matching pair too, don't you, Jensen? Yeah. Yes! <laughs> um, so hopefully you can see the garment enough. The Billy um, jumper, I've done a three-quarter length sleeve version. There is a billowy <laughs> sleeve version as well. Um, uh, but I chickened out of it and ended up doing the slim version just because this fabric is quite sort of thick and not very drapey and the only other change I made um, or two changes I lowered the neckline slightly at the front here and I also extended the front panel of the jumper just an inch longer just to make a bit more room for my bust so there we go 
So my next section is gadget stroke confessions. So I was at my local quilt group and one of the ladies there said, oh, I've got a new bag, look at this. I saw it, I was like, ooh, I need one of those. <laughs> I really liked the fabric that it's made of. I actually haven't taken the label off it yet. Um, and I haven't filled it with any goodies yet. So I think this will be really useful though. So this was from Aldi. And it is actually one of those bags on a trolley included. And it was only 16 99 And I just thought that will be so useful for going to classes and things when you need to bring no end of stuff. I always end up having to take like three bags this would be ideal and I've got a I've got a bag like this that I've got my small sewing machine that I take to classes in already so having a second one of these I can always take two bags um, with my machine in one and all the bits and bobs in the other now I thought this was really good because there are some dividers on the inside of the bag I wouldn't say that it's the most expensive quality, but there are some dividers in there, and I think that they'll be they'll they'll be good enough to, to use. There are some pockets on the side of the bag, which I think will be really useful too. And in the pocket in the front, there are some little elastic um, places there to put all your bits and bobs pens and uh, marking pens and all sorts so I thought that that would be really useful and I just thought that the printer was really cute as well so for 16.99 I thought you can't go wrong I can't resist <laughs> so I bought myself one of those I did check the website just before I started recording the podcast I don't think that they have any in stock at the moment but I know Aldi do tend to get things in and out of stock and they may have some um, either with the same print or a different print sometime in the future um, one of my friends said she'd bought one previously from there anyway so they do get them in periodically so keep an eye out for that if you're looking for a, a bag to take to classes and things so still a bit because I do have one to carry my machine in already. <laughs> so now it's my shop update section. So those of you who've purchased the June yarn clubs, um, they will be shipped tomorrow, so watch out for those. And the dates for the July yarn clubs, for them to become available on my website, are the 24th of June until the 3rd of July, and they will be shipped on the 8th of July. I will be listing July and August together or July separately so you have the choice of ordering two months clubs at once so that you can save on postage. Of course they won't be shipped until all the other August yarn clubs are sent as well so there will be a delay on postage. I also wanted to mention I'm not going to podcast next week but there will be a video. I will be putting up my tutorial on how I block things, wet blocking things and I've got examples of a cardigan, a jumper, a shawl, um, some mittens and a hat so hopefully that covers most things for you and hope you find that useful. So last but not least is Jensen so over to you Jensen. So today's feature with Jensen he's showing him with his lovely corner to corner crochet blanket. <laughs> so Jensen is going to show you his corner to corner crochet blanket and he's very busy chewing on his monkey at the moment because he's teething <laughs> he's got one tooth starting to come out um, so this is the corner to corner crochet blanket and it's a free pattern by Bella Coco I've held two yarns double one undyed with another one that's made of lots of little bits of yarn and tied together with a magic knot <laughs> and then that's crocheted together and then I've just added a little scalloped edging around the outside uh, Jensen loves this blanket because he likes to look at all the colours in it um, at the moment he's a little bit busy chewing on his monkey <laughs> that's right yeah say bye bye to everybody so thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and i shall see you in the next episode bye right okay
So you think I should have done a different colour uh, there? Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, okay, I'll try that then.